Hello everyone. We Talk Nerdy is back from hiatus. This week I've got a quick show for you. I'm going to talk about a scary new Trojan horse that's been making the rounds, the new Nexus 5, and I review the video game Hawken. So stay tuned. We Talk Nerdy. WeTalkNerdy.tv is sponsored by UBU Enterprises, specializing in custom business website design, social media marketing, and online branding strategies for companies and products. Hello everyone, and welcome to We Talk Nerdy, the show about tech news, reviews, and how-tos. I'm your host, Dave Larson. We Talk Nerdy has been on hiatus recently while I've moved from Florida to California. Well, I'm settled into my new apartment now, and I should have shows for you a little bit more regularly. A lot has happened in the intervening weeks. Apple released some new iPads, uh, Twitter went public, there's a new Google Nexus phone to talk about, and Google is building some mystery barges in San Francisco Bay. I'll talk a little bit about the Nexus 5 in a minute, but first I wanted to talk about a new malware threat uh, that's been making the rounds. It's called CryptoLocker, and it's the first in what will probably be a long line of new ransomware. Uh, now, ransomware has been around for a while. Uh, I've been infected by this kind of software myself in the past. It pops up on your computer, and it tells you you have a virus, but you really don't. The program that's telling you that, that you have a virus is the actual virus. It offers to help you remove the software from your computer for a price. And this kind of software was annoying, but pretty easily removed. CryptoLocker takes the scheme one step further, a much more malignant kind of further. If you're infected with CryptoLocker, data on your computer will be encrypted with strong and at this point pretty much unbreakable encryption. You won't be able to access your data again ever unless you agree to pay approximately $300 US to this company that's ransoming your computer back to you. Even if you get rid of the CryptoLocker software, your data is still gone. At this point, you really only have two options, pay the ransom or live without your data. So what can you do? Well, first and foremost, back up your important files. I can't stress this enough. Way back in episode three of We Talk Nerdy, I talked about Macrium Reflect and how you could use it to back up your entire computer system. You don't have to use Macrium Reflect, of course. You could burn your important files to a CD, DVD, flash drive, or even external hard drive. You could also use any number of the growing online storage sites, uh, many of which offer free uh, backup storage. Google Drive, for example, uh, will give you five gigabytes of online storage for free. If you need to store more data than that, you can pay a fee. Uh, you could also sign up for an automated online backup service like CrashPlan or Carbonite. Another way to avoid CryptoLocker is to make sure your virus protection software is up to date. Since CryptoLocker is new, virus detection may not detect it right now, but it may in the future. Keeping your virus protection software up to date is always good advice. And finally, practice safe computing. According to Wikipedia, CryptoLocker typically propagates as an attachment to a seemingly innocuous email file, usually taking the appearance of a legitimate company email or from a bot. The attached zip file contains an executable file with a file name and icon disguised as a PDF. Taking advantage of Windows' default behavior of hiding the extension of file names uh, in order to disguise itself. Uh, now, right now, as far as I know, CryptoLocker is only on Windows operating system. Some instances of CryptoLocker may actually contain the Zeus Trojan virus, which in turn installs CryptoLocker. In other words, don't atta open attachments from, I want to say, any source. But if you do, view any attachments, even those from a trusted source, as suspicious. Now, recently, Google released the Nexus 5, which immediately sold out on the Play Store. The Nexus 5 has a full 1080p display, Snapdragon 2.2 GHz processor, an improved camera, and is the first phone to have Android 4.4 KitKat. 
16 gigabyte versions start at only $350. And there's been a lot of excitement online over this phone. It's a pure Android experience phone. It doesn't have a lot of um, junkware that, you know, typically Samsung or HTC put on their phones. Uh, the Nexus 5 is most likely the least expensive, most powerful smartphone you could get right now. Uh, at least one without a contract. And that's one of the big advantages of this. You can buy this phone, take it to your carrier, and uh, sign up, and in theory, you wouldn't have to ha sign a contract. Now, I don't have a Nexus 5 to review myself, uh, but those who do are giving the Nexus 5 very high marks. And Gadget has a great review of the Nexus 5 on their website, and I will uh, link to it in my show notes so you can take a look for yourself. Personally, I'm kind of torn. It's time for me to get a new phone. Uh, since Verizon raised my rates, I've been looking for the perfect new phone. Um, I'm very unhappy with Verizon right now. I don't like the fact that they've raised my rates, but unfortunately, there's nothing much I can do about it unless I want to switch carriers. At this point, I've narrowed it down to the Nexus 5 or the Moto X. The Moto X lacks some of the features of the Nexus 5. It has a lower resolution um, uh, display, and it has a slower processor. But I really like its voice recognition feature. Sorry, voice recognition features. Uh, the, ne the Moto X has some really cool abilities to you know, be able to, you can talk to it. Um, you don't have to touch the phone. You can have it on your nightstand, and you can say, OK, Google and it'll respond to you with Google Now um, uh, type features. But since I'm still looking for a full-time job uh, and my new hometown, affordable is kind of the word of the day for me. Uh, and the Nexus 5 may be the choice in that regard. Uh, but I'll keep you posted on my decision. Um, hopefully I should have some sort of a new phone in the next couple of weeks. Now, I'd like to talk to you very briefly about UBU Enterprises. Uh, they're a sponsor of mine, and if you need a new website for your small business, or maybe you need help managing your social media for your business, UBU Enterprises can help you. They have personally helped me a lot. Uh, they took my ideas, added their own flair for design and execution, and they helped me get my website exactly where I wanted it to be. I, could have, I couldn't have put my website together without them, and the best part is they're still helping me make sure that my website runs smoothly. Visit them at ubuenterprises.com. Now, I have a quick review for you today. Uh, of a new, not a new video game, it's actually been around for a while, but it's a, a free-to-play online mech combat game called Hawken, uh, made by it, the folks at Adhesive Games. You play the role of a mech pilot battling other mech pilots for glory and experience points. I first heard about Hawken in an online post about independent game developers, it must have been two years ago. It's the kind of publicity that mainstream video game developers wish they could buy. Before it was even released, people were going crazy on YouTube over the trailer. Now, as I said, Hawken has been out for almost a year. I've been meaning to try it out for some time, but I just never seem to get around to it. Well, the publishers recently released their first major expansion to Hawken called Hawken Invasion. So now seemed like a perfect time to jump in. Invasion brings new mechs, new gameplay modes, and new weapons to Hawken. Getting started with Hawken is pretty straightforward. You simply go to the website, download the game, and install it. It's a fairly large download though, so be prepared to wait a while. You'll need to sign up for a free account, and once you've done that, you're ready to get started. New players to Hawken are given the option of playing through several tutorials, which teaches you the basics of piloting and mech combat mechanics. The tutorials are a much needed introduction because as you might suspect, suspect, mech operations can be fairly complex. Once you've graduated from basic training, you're given a mech and you're ready to play against real opponents. The game has many mechs for you to choose from and several play modes that you can try out. However, you have to earn them first. When you first start out, you're limited to the entry level CR-T recruit mech which looks a bit like a TV with legs. 
You're also limited to deathmatch only, team deathmatch mode only. Once you play a few games, other game modes and mechs become quickly available. In total, there are five game modes and 15 different mechs which you can unlock just by playing and leveling up. Now, I did mention that Hawken is a free to play game. Often in the online community, these games are sarcastically referred to as pay to play games. Hawken, to its credit, I think does a very good job of offering the right balance of rewards for those who want to play free and those who are willing to pay. Every mech in the game can be unlocked just by playing, and this is made clear from the outset. If you're an impatient type, you can pay cash to unlock mechs, weapons, and other mods at a faster pace. Both experience, which you earn by playing, and credits, which you purchase, can be used to improve your mechs with better weapons, armor, and other useful items. I really like that payment is an option and not a requirement. The gameplay in Hawking is nothing short of spectacular. First and fomo foremost, I have to say that the game designers have done an awesome job making the game look fantastic. It sounds great and it feels very realistic. When you're running around in a demolished city in your mech and you're shooting up enemies, it really feels like it should. Battles are intense and thrilling, and for, and for me, often short, mostly because I suck. But even when I'm getting killed, it's pretty fun. Four of the five gameplay modes involve fighting other players. There is one new mode uh, called Co-op Bot Destruction, which allows you to team up with friends and battle waves of computer-controlled enemies. The maps for the various gameplay modes are all well designed and each is challenging in its own way. Personally, I favor the more open wide maps to the claustrophobic cityscapes, but here again, they look amazing and if there were one complaint, I would say that there could be more maps of each kind. Uh, after you've played for a while, you may notice that um, the maps are kind of repetitive. Uh, but I suspect that their library will probably increase over time. Hawken offers several features that I really, really like. For example, you have the ability to repair your mech during the match. You need to duck out of the way um, and sort of hide a little bit because if there are any enemies around, you are completely vulnerable while you're doing your repair. Another great feature is that each time you're killed, you have the option of changing your mech. If you have a fast and light mech and it's not working out for you, you can switch to a more heavy duty model and continue to play. Maybe you'll have better luck with that one. This is true for all the game modes except co-op bot destruction mode, where you're limited to a single type of mech for the duration of that match. I also have to praise the team matchmaking and auto balancing feature. The software is designed to make sure that players are roughly on the same level and that matches remain balanced throughout. I've yet to be involved in a match where I didn't feel like my team had a chance to win. It's no fun to know that you're always going to get crushed by your opponents, and Hawken does an excellent job of keeping team play fair and balanced, and I really like that feature. By the way, my Hawken call sign is Ordnance, with a zero instead of an O. Since my usual gameplay friends are too busy to play these days, I could use some new teammates to help me learn the ropes. <laughs> Look me up if you're online and playing Hawken. All in all, I really like Hawken. It's fun to play, and like I said, it really looks fantastic. I really want to like it more. My one major complaint of Hawken is it's a, there's a lack of variety. When it gets right down to it, Team Deathmatch really isn't that different from Free For All Deathmatch or even Capture the Flag. It's all about killing the guy with the red name over his mech. What Hawken really needs, in my opinion, is some kind of goal-oriented play. Not just to earn more experience, to improve your mech so that you can earn more experience, but something like a campaign mode with goals, and dare I say it, a story. It isn't just about blowing up the enemy. I think if, thought, if Hawken had something like that, not only would I gladly pay for it, but it would be a total slam dunk. 
and I suppose that's not outside the realm of possibility. Adhesive Games has a fantastic platform in Hawken, and as they continue to refine it, I'm curious to see where they'll take it. Maybe some point in the future, there'll be some sort of uh, storyline campaign mode. At any rate, I give Hawken four out of five stars. It's a terrific game, and for free, you should definitely go out, download it, and give it a try. Well, that's it for this week. I hope you've enjoyed the show. For those of you who stuck with me over a sort of long, difficult summer and my hiatus, I thank you. Now that I'm settled here in California, I hope to bring you new episodes regularly. If you like We Talk Nerdy, I'd sure appreciate your help spreading the word. I'd like to reach as many folks as I can. And remember, we have an online shop where you can order t-shirts, mugs, bumper stickers, and all sorts of cool We Talk Nerdy swag. If you're interested, check out our store and buy some stuff. I get a small bonus when you do, uh, but for the most part, I really want to just get the word out there so that more people will enjoy We Talk Nerdy. And remember, if you have questions or problems and you need answers, visit, visit us at wetalknerdy.tv and leave a comment, or you can always send us an email at wetalknerdy.tv at gmail.com. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time on We Talk Nerdy TV. Sounds my sir.